Well, I've had a couple of requests to uh, show what I'm going to planning to grow in the garden this summer, so I thought I would do a little update here, starting with a couple of items that I have purchased for use in the garden. I always have a great deal of trouble with uh, cucumbers in the greenhouse. No matter where I plant them, they seem to take over the greenhouse. So I have bought these tripod things on Amazon. Um, not terribly expensive, made in China, and definitely some assembly required, but I put one of them together just to see what it would, would look like. I don't know as I would use them outside in the garden, but in the greenhouse where there's no wind, I think they will uh, work quite well for what I have in mind anyway. I'm going to grow my cucumbers up them. I may even try them with a couple of the tall tomato plants, but time will tell. One of the photographs in the Amazon ad shows them being used for tomatoes. Eh, I'm not quite so sure. They seemed a bit on the tipsy side to me, but I may give it a try. Well, if you've watched my last couple of short videos, you'll know that I'm already trying to use these seed starter trays with LED lights, very reasonable, $25, $26 on Amazon. What I'm doing with them right now is trying to grow some salad greens, some, some lettuce, but later on in the winter I will be using them to start seedlings for the garden. And they seem to be working quite well. I've had good luck so far getting the seedlings started anyway. Well, with cucumbers this year, I have gone back to my tried and true, I guess, quarantine or quarantine. It is a European gherkin type cucumber. Very prolific. I've grown them before and really like them. They're only four to six inches long. Excellent for pickles, but also good for salad and sandwiches or whatever. Uh, they are what's called parthenocarpic. That means it is an F1 hybrid, a cross between two different kinds of cucumbers, and they're not going to tell you what the parent cucumbers are, but it does not produce any male blossoms. Every blossom is female, and every blossom uh, produces a cucumber, so prolific is the word for them, I guess. Looking forward to growing them again. I forgot to mention that the cucumber seeds and these radish seeds are from uh, Vessies, Vessies Seeds in Prince Edward Island. I always have to grow radishes. I love the things and love them in salads and just eating them fresh out in the garden. So this year I have selected one that I've never heard tell of before and it's a white radish. And the variety is called Pearl and it says Jewel of the Soil. And like any radish, they mature quite rapidly, and these are supposed to be quite mild. Anyway, I'll have a white radish to try this summer. I think my favorite seed company now has become Annapolis Seeds in Nova Scotia. They sell all open-pollinated heirloom varieties. Uh, so if you once you buy the seeds, you can save your seeds and, and regrow them and get the same thing the following year, is what open pollinated means, I guess. Uh, and that's what I have done. I grew these last year. The variety is called Gardener's Sweetheart uh, because they are, well, they're quite heart-shaped, really. And uh, they're a cross between Gardener's Delight and something else, but they've been grown on successfully for many years. And I really like them. They're quite prolific. They, of course, their cherry tomatoes are the earliest things to ripen, but they were still going strong into October last year. I'm only going to grow two varieties of tomatoes this year. The Gardener's Sweetheart that I just showed you, and this one is called Manitoba, a very early, I guess you would call it a salad or slicer type tomato, not a beef steak, not one of the huge ones, but it's uh, designed for our cold, short climates here, and it worked very well last year in the greenhouse, so that's my second kind. I've grown many different varieties in the past, and 
varying degrees of success, but I had success with these last year, so they are the only ones that I plan to grow this year. Also, I didn't mention, I guess, these are seeds that I saved from uh, seeds, the tomatoes that I grew last year, which were open pollinated from an apple seed. Well, I've grown runner beans many times over the years, and last year I grew the standard scarlet runner beans again from seed that I had saved several years ago. For some reason, I guess my taste has changed. I really enjoyed them last year, uh, right up until late fall. Well, I've gone with a new variety. These are the next lot of seeds here, or all this year's seed purchase from Annapolis Seeds. And these are called Greek Gigantic Runner Beans, and they have white flowers, as you can see. And when we get over to have a look at the actual bean, they are an enormous white bean. I guess the idea is you could save the large white beans for storing and, and cooking in the winter. And I suspect I won't have that many to save. There's only a dozen or so seeds in the package. But I will certainly enjoy growing them and uh, hopefully the, they will be as tasty as the Scarlet Runners were last year. Well, I always have to grow at least one chili pepper. These are just an early season jalapeno and it says on the seed packet from Annapolis Seeds that they are relatively mild. Um, probably the first thing that I will start under those uh, seed trays with their built-in grow lights sometime in March more than likely because peppers take quite a while to mature so I grow them on for a while in the house before they go out into the greenhouse. Well the heirloom variety of peas that I'm going to try this year are called green arrow peas. Um, I will probably plant them in the greenhouse, not necessary in the summertime here, that's for sure, but to get an early spring crop of, of peas, I'll plant them just as soon as I can plant them in the greenhouse once everything in there has, has thawed up for the season. And probably using one of those tripods. And these are Waltham butternut squash, and I will be growing those up at the community garden, I expect, in my plot up there. It's such a warm, sunny spot if we have a hot, sunny summer anyway. Last summer it rained at some point every week. I still managed to grow some very large pumpkins and squash up there, but I can't grow this particular variety on my property. It just is not hot and sunny enough. I'm too shaded down here. Uh, they require a lot of sunshine, but they they seem to grow quite well up there, so that's what I will be attempting with them anyway. And of course, they are a delicious squash. And also, up at the community garden, I will be growing pumpkins for Angel. Angel gets pumpkin with her meals twice a day, and she just finished up all of the pumpkin that I grew last year. The last container came out of the freezer and was used this week, so... These are not going to be as gigantic as the ones that I grew last year. These are a pie pumpkin called Winter Luxury Pie Pumpkin. Again, they are seeds from Annapolis Seed. And that concludes the vegetables that I'm going to be growing from Annapolis. But every year when you place an order with Annapolis, I always get a free package of some sort of seeds, herbs or flowers or vegetables or whatever. Well, this year's free packet of seeds was red poppies, a European classic field poppy. It says they grow 30 inches tall and grow quite fast, evidently, so I will scatter those somewhere and hopefully get to see them bloom before the summer is out. Well, that concludes the little video. That's basically all that I'm going to grow, I guess. I can't think of anything else that I'll be adding to the mix just yet, but... Thank you very much for watching.